So I've been meaning to pick up uh, another bipod here for a while now, just haven't done it until now. So I went out recently and picked up a Harris SBRM or BRM as sometimes referred to, uh, six to nine, snag this guy from uh, Tria Tactical. I'll put links to all this stuff down below, including the parts I'm gonna roll in here in a minute. So I have a couple upgrades I wanna do to this guy to get it up to snuff. There's um, a few things we can do to improve on this guy right here. It is a good bipod. Harris is a pretty good standard, but um, again, we're gonna do a couple improvements to this guy. Before I get started though, um, I wanna mention, a lot of people ask me what bipods are I use or they're kind of new to shooting in general and want to know what a, a good bipod is. Uh, again, Harris is pretty much your, your standard. From there, you can kind of go up and down. It really depends. Um, the six to nine is a great variety. As far as length goes, it's really just gonna depend on what position you're shooting from. I have uh, an 11 to 24 or 26 inch bipod. I can't remember. That's a Harris and that's great for shooting in the seated position. Uh, great for hunting coyotes, stuff like that. So another bipod I use here a lot is the Atlas. And the Atlas is an awesome bipod, very versatile, very flexible. Um, it is a little bit of an improvement over the Harris, I, I will admit, but the only downside is it's really expensive. So these are close to 300 bucks or over $300. So most people, when they hear that, they're like, holy shit, that's a lot for a bipod. I'm not gonna spend that much money, which is understandable, but they are worth it. Um, this right here is gonna cover probably like 99% of people out there though, if you're if you're wanting to shoot from the prone. So I always suggest the BRMS 69. Anyway, um, also I have here is a Badger LPHM, which stands for Low Profile Harris Mount. These come from, uh, you can get these at Triad Tactical also, put links down below again. The These come in a, a racks mounting system, which is the, the Remington uh, M-Lock, and then now they come in Picatinny. So I'm gonna install this guy on the Harris, and this is going to basically replace the swivel tray that connects to a sling swivel, um, removing some weight, removing the uh, the main problem with this, which is you always have to tighten them down. They seem to come loose a lot. Um, so this is gonna fix that, and also it's gonna be a little, uh, little more lightweight. So moving that there, and also I have uh, here, it's a pretty standard upgrade for the Harris. Uh, this is called a pod lock. This is gonna replace the tensioner on the rear, which tensions uh, how easy it is to swivel the bipod. I like to use the word can't, canting it left and right. So this is gonna go on as well. So let's clear the table off here and get these guys installed. It should be pretty quick and easy. So I'm gonna do my best here to kill two birds with one stone and kind of do both of these at the same time. They're really kind of the same parts and everything. So basically when we're reassembling it, we will reassemble and install the pod lock as well. But we're, our first goal is gonna to be to do the low profile Harris mount. So first of all here, I just wanna mention that this is the rear of the bipod. This is the knurled nut that you would use to uh, tension or tighten and loosen uh, the tension on the swivel option. So the ability for the, the bipod to cant left and right, this is to adjust the tension on that. And it's really difficult to do that by hand, especially difficult to get it tight enough to leave it where you want it, which is where the pod lock comes in. This is going to replace that nut entirely and give us a little bit more uh, options there as far as tightening and loosening. So anyway, taking this guy, we got a quarter inch ratchet. We're gonna remove that nut inside the knurled nut here. Uh, and basically just let uh, all of the the pieces in here come out uh, and fall at the back and then we're gonna put it back together and, uh, and all this stuff should just basically come right out boom so we don't need pretty much any of this this is the whole tray that connects to your sling swivel we're getting rid of this entirely so we do want to keep this washer this washer this pin and this rod um, these two pieces as well we're getting rid of they're going to be replaced with a pod lock so flipping this over going to the front of the bipod we're going to reinstall this guy flat washer first i should note that i was going to reweigh this whole thing before and after but i cannot find my scale so if i can do so in the future I'll, i will but um, right now I, I just don't have it so we're taking our badger low profile harris mount again picatinny version and mounting it on there and then we have our flat uh notched washer it's gonna go there pin and rod Let's do there like so back through matching up accordingly i'm gonna hold this as i flip it over and then this is where you would reinstall your normal knurled nut. But um, again, we're not doing that. We're gonna install the pod lock. So if you're just doing the pod lock, 
you can pull this nut off and keep your thumb on here uh, with whatever mount you have going. So that way this guy does not fall through and you have to put it all the way back together. So this guy right here is going to install. And then we're pretty much done. So that's it. So we went ahead and upgraded from this old style tray, which is kind of bulky and heavy and um, doesn't, uh, doesn't really keep retention as well as it probably should. In fact, that's the biggest complaint, I think, with this style of mount is that you always have to keep tightening them. So we've eliminated that, so we're going to be good to go and just to be able to use a Picatinny on this guy. Again, there's a bunch of different kinds of mounts for these, racks, M-Lock. There's probably some other manufacturers out there, uh, but also and then the pod lock. This guy's going to be pretty solid. So I think I'm going to get this mounted up on uh, the SPR. Once I find my scale, I think I'll weigh it and compare it to the, to the Atlas. They're pretty close in weight surprisingly they're surprisingly close so um this guy is the notched version by the way i'm not a big fan of the smooth but um should be good so pod block works like this so when you're when you're down on the gun uh and you want to tighten or loosen this thing and again to adjust this tension to adjust the swivel or can't uh, you can tighten it or loosen it uh, and then if you want you can pull it out disengaging that gear basically and then swinging it any way you want without adjusting the tension so say you get it snug down get it back on there there we go so say you get it snug down uh, you can't go any tighter and it's in a weird position you can unlock it swing it out of the way and you're good to go so there you go that's it if you guys got any questions put them down in the comments below again I'll be happy to answer anything and I'll put links down in the description for all this stuff so check it out it's um upgrades and everything you're looking at i want to say again 90 bucks for the bipod i think it's about 50 60 for the for the low profile harris mount and then the pod locks run around i want to say 20 or 30 bucks so don't quote me on that but i'll i'll put i'll put this stuff down below so later so there she is all installed and ready to go again we took the original bipod installed the Badger low profile Harris mount. This one's Picatinny. And we installed a pod lock on the rear. Um, all of this stuff I should note is, is non-permanent. So if you wanted to revert back to the original setup for any reason, just save these parts, of course, which is what I'll do. Uh, and then you can always revert back. So if you're gonna sell it or you don't like something or whatever, it's not a permanent modification. So thumbs up.